This video will show you how to install the homebrew launcher or hack your Nintendo Wii easily using the SDR hacks method. It is an old guide, but I think it is still interesting to follow. Let's get started. You need a Nintendo Wii on a new region, which is running stock firmware. Stock firmware means unmodified or unhacked yet, and it should be running firmware 4.3. But if you have a region change console, do not follow this guide, or else you will break your Wii. Watch the next section to find it out. And you need an SD card with 1GB capacity or higher to backup the console's NAND and install some essential apps. If you don't have it, please buy it. Trust me, it won't make you go poor. Before doing anything, let's check the Nintendo Wii region by looking at the site sticker. Mine is USA. You may see other readings like KOR for Korean, EUR for European, and JPN for Japanese. Now turn on your console and click the Wii button on the bottom left of the screen. Then click the Wii settings. And you can see the firmware version and the region on the top right of the screen. Make sure it is running firmware 4.3. If it is not 4.3, you need to update it online. But warning, if your console's site sticker with KOR or JPN, and you see the English language on the screen, it means your console is hacked and region changed. Updating this type of console to the latest firmware is a no-no, as you will definitely break it. If the site sticker matches the firmware shown on the screen, then you can safely update it. If you have a region change console, then you need to use the modme method to rehack the console. Download the Wii all in one package from the link in the description. Insert the SD card to your computer and check its properties. Check its file system. If it is not FAT32, then you cannot use it. In this video, the file system is XFAT. So we need to reformat the SD card as FAT32. If your SD card is 32GB or less, you can use the Windows formatter to format it as FAT32. But if your SD card is 64GB or more, you need a tool called GUI format to get the job done. If you are using the Windows formatter, press the start button to proceed. Now open the all-in-one package with File Explorer or other file extractors like WinRAR or Zip and extract all its content to the SD card. At this point, insert the SD card to your console. Next, we will set up the internet connection. Click the right arrow, then choose Internet. Select Connection Settings. You might have set up the internet connection previously, but I assume you haven't set up anything yet in this video. Click any connection slot. Choose any connection method, but I chose wireless connection. Click search for an access point. Click OK. I have several access points to choose from the list. Choose the one that you think is the best. Enter the password, then press OK. And save it. Let the console do the internet connection test. If your console is in the safe zone, which means not region change and the firmware is still below 4.3, you can proceed updating the console online. But my console is already on firmware 4.3, so I chose no. For the SDR hacks to work, we need to use a special DNS. So now, select change settings. Click the right arrow until you see the DNS settings. Select No, then choose Advanced Settings. Type in the DNS address exactly like in the video. So 
these are the DNS address. Make sure you type correctly. Then select Confirm. Save it and make sure it passes the connection test. If you see this screen, then you can continue with the guide. But if you don't see this notification, then try other Wi-Fi sources. Then again, select No. Now you need to go back two times, then select the user agreements. Then choose Yes. And click Next. If you see this rainbow dash pony on the screen, then the exploit is successful. Please allow 1 until 2 minutes while it is downloading the exploit to the console. But if the console freezes, turn off your Wii and retry the procedure. Oh by the way, I didn't press those buttons. But you can move the cursor to check if the console freezes. After 1 and a half minutes, we will see a response on the screen. Let it work and wait until it gets into the HackMe installer. Now you need to wait a while until it asks you to press the number 1 button. Press the number 1 button on your Wiimote to continue. On the HackMe installer screen, press continue. Then choose install the homebrew channel. Next, choose boot me. If your console enables you to install boot me as boot 2, then you have the advantage of getting the brick protection. But if you find out that you can install boot me as iOS, it is okay. You can get the same feature as installing boot me as boot 2 by installing preloader in the next section. So don't you worry about it. Just remember this, not all consoles are eligible to install boot me as boot 2. If you have an older Japanese, European, or US console, you might be able to get that feature. Okay, now let's continue with the guide. Select install boot me as boot 2. Just continue. Then again, just continue. Now install boot me as iOS. Again, always select continue. Return to the main menu. And then choose exit. You will get into the homebrew channel. Press the home button on your remote, then choose launch boot me. Now move the cursor to the gear icon by pressing the power button 3 times and confirm it by pressing the reset button. Select the first icon by pressing the reset button. It will begin dumping the console's name. Relax and enjoy the show. Now press any of the console's button to get back to the boot me menu. Select the last icon by pressing the power button 3 times then press the reset button to confirm it. Then select the homebrew channel. Since we have successfully installed the homebrew channel, we will now restore the DNS settings. Press the home button then choose exit to system menu. Then again, get back to the Wii options. Select the Wii settings. Press the right arrow, then select Internet. Select Connection Settings. Select the current connection and change its settings. Press the right arrow until you see the DNS settings. Select Yes to auto-obtain DNS. And save it. Proceed with testing the internet connection. Select No, then get back to the main screen. And reopen the homebrew channel. Next, we will install the preloader. 
Preloader is an app that loads before the Wii booting up. And this app adds another level of brick protection. And Preloader can also enable hacks for your system like disabling updates, region free everything, and so on. Now press the plus button to update or install Preloader. Now press the A button to exit to the homebrew channel. Since we have installed the preloader, we need to turn off the console to access the app. So press the home button and select shutdown. Press and hold the reset button, then press the power button to open preloader. Now use your remote d-pad to select system menu hacks. Enable these options. And save the settings. Press the B button to go back, then choose the homebrew channel. In this section, we will install the custom iOS, which is required if you want to load games from the USB drive, and it helps some homebrew apps to run better. Select the 2XC iOS installer. Press any remote button to continue. We will set up three custom iOS. For the first one, look at the red box. So select the custom iOS, its base, the slot number, and the revision. Match it with the red box. Press the A button to continue. Then press the A button again to install it. And wait a while. And press the A button again to continue. For the second custom iOS, look at the green box. Press the A button two times to install it. And press the A button again to continue. For the last custom iOS, look at the purple box. Press the A button two times to install it. Now press the B button to exit to the homebrew channel. If you previously backup the console's name, now it's time to move or copy it to your computer. Remove the SD card from your console. Create a new folder on your computer and name it as you like. Select the keys and the NAND binary file. Copy or cut it, and paste it to the newly created folder. By moving the NAND files, you can save about 500MB SD card space, and risk losing the NAND data if the SD card has somehow gone bad. You can then reinsert the SD card into your console. If you have installed BootMe on Boot2, then every time you turn on the console, you will see this BootMe screen. And it won't go away until you alter it. If it annoys you, we can edit the settings. Press and hold the power button to turn off the console and remove the SD card from it. Get into the BootMe folder on the SD card and edit the bootme.ini file with the notepad. Uncomment the auto boot option. Then you can change if you want to auto boot to system menu or the homebrew channel. In this video, I chose the system menu. If you want to eliminate the auto boot delay, uncomment it and set it to zero. Don't forget to save the file and insert the SD card into the console. Now, every time you turn on the console, you will see the standard health and safety screen, like you never hack the console. But you will see the homebrew channel right there. And that's how you hack the Nintendo Wii. If you want to set up the USB loader GX, you can watch my previous video. If you miss installing the bootme, run the hackme installer. And if you want to run the homebrew browser, be my guest. Thanks for watching this video, stay healthy, and see you next time.